Hi, welcome back to my workshop and the Pennsylvania Railroad Scale House Scratch Build Redux. What do I mean by Redux? Well, over the past years I've added a lot of build videos to my channel. But the older ones were just photos with no narration. Now that I'm able to add narration, it helps a lot in being able to describe what I'm doing when I'm trying to present it to you. This one started when a friend of mine asked if I could scratch build the scale house at Mount Union, Pennsylvania for his wonderful O-scale layout. And I said I'd go ahead and give it a try. So together we started collecting as many photographs as we could of the building. He had a number that he had already taken back in the 80s and we collected older black and white ones from the 40s and 50s. We also collected a number of drawings, blueprints, and diagrams from the Pennsylvania Railroad Historical and Technical Society and from other publications. But I was finding areas where the photos of our building didn't match up with some of the drawings. We found out that this was because this was a standard design for scale houses for the Pennsylvania Railroad, but they didn't build them all the same. For example, this one in Northumberland which is just slightly different than ours at Mount Union. Then it was time to figure out what colors I was going to use to paint the scale house. It not only had to match the Pennsylvania Railroad's colors, it also had to blend with the colors that were already on my friend's layout. And I even went as far as making a scale size mock-up just to see what size I was going to be working with. Once I had all that material collected and all the decisions made, it was time to start getting everything together. I had to source a number of items, including getting some laser cut windows that were going to match the scale house. These came from my friend at RailScale Models. Now I started with the foundation, worked my way up from the bottom. This was before I had my Ultimation Slicer, but fortunately I had my Ultimation Sander and I couldn't have built this without it. In order to get all of the angles of the base building right, I needed to get everything sanded at an exact, precise angle. I had taped wax paper over my scale size drawings so that I could lay out the foundation on that, and everything I built was going to be from the foundation up. So I used glue to assemble the foundation blocks to hold it in place as it was drying. And once I had the foundation done, I had to put some supports underneath it. They were going to hold the floor in place. Now as it turned out, the joists ended up being covered and I probably didn't need to do as many. But I enjoy building. And then I had to cut out a notch for where the door was going to go. Next up I started on the walls with the back wall being the first. This was going to be what every other wall was supported by. So again, I built it as you'd build a standard wall and then measured to make sure that everything was going to fit correctly. I decided now to paint the windows since I was going to be building some of my walls around the windows. And I found the correct red that was going to work for the Pennsylvania Railroad's colors and ended up painting my laser cut windows to match that. Then I started building my end walls using the windows as guides as to where they were going to go in place. And I had to make sure that all my measurements were accurate that they would still fit on the foundation that I had made. And building all of the walls was a lot of fun. It was also an exercise in construction. Once I came to the wall that was going to hold the door, I had to do a little bit different construction, but again, everything worked out okay. Now, just to get away from gluing wood together for a few minutes, I took the stove that was going to be in the scale house and cleaned it up. It was a pretty rough casting, but it cleaned up nicely. And once I was done with it and had painted it, it ended up coming out looking pretty good. I now went and painted my support walls. They weren't really going to be seen very much, but there might be some portions of them that were showing 
where windows were mounted and I wanted to make sure they were the correct color to match. So once I was done with them, it was time to paint the inside paneling. And this was a cream color. And once it was dry, I cut and fit the pieces to the inside of all of the walls and glued it all in place. Then I propped everything together to make sure it was all gonna line up and fit together properly. Now I painted the outside siding and we'd gone with plastic because this had to be a novelty siding and plastic was the only form we could find it in where it matched. So I applied all the paneling to the outside and again pieced the pieces together to see how they looked. Now it was time to work on the front section and this was going to be mostly windows. So I built a support wall then I used some of the pieces that were going to be the outside structure to measure how far the windows were going to be apart. I built my framing with places for the windows to fit in. And again, test fitted to make sure everything was going to go together correctly. Then I applied the inside paneling to my front portion. And then glued the outside novelty siding to the front portion of the walls. And this is how it was coming together. I had also built a case that the scale would sit inside and put that in the stove in place to see how they looked in there. Now to hold the windows in place I needed to put a window stop and I used scale one by ones for this. They were applied to the outside and the window would sit inside flush up against the window stop. And I had painted my door, again a laser cut piece, and made sure that it fit inside as well. And I started to glue all my windows in place now. And I had already put the acetate inside the windows before I did this step. The basic shape of the building was now starting to come together. Now it was time to start applying all of the trim on the outside of the building that would cover all those gaps. I had made a little board showing the different sizes that I was going to be working with so I knew what I needed to have. And I started painting all of these the color we had picked for the trim. In some cases I had to use two pieces to get the right profile for some of the trim that they had on the outside of the building. And again there's no way I could have done any of this work without the benefits of the Ultimation Sander. It made getting the correct angle so easy. And there were so many angles that had to match up perfectly on this building. And I found myself often having to go back to the photos or the drawings and get measurements so I knew exactly what size trim I was going to use somewhere. They ended up putting a lot of trim around this building. And it was actually quite a bit of fun to apply everything and get it to match up. Anyone who enjoys carpentry will understand what I'm talking about. Once I was done with all the trim, it was time to start looking at some of the other details we had to apply. We were going to have working lamps on the front of the building that the scale house used to light up cars if they were weighing them in the dark. We found some LEDs that had the shades that were correct, and I just had to find a way to route the wire down behind the siding. I had also put in an overhead light inside the structure and I worked on a couple more of the details that were going to go inside the chair and I had put a scale inside the scale box and painted the stove. Now it was time to start working on the roof and I started with the rafters. I made one rafter again to size and checked how it was going to fit on the building. Then from that rafter I made a jig to make all the rest of the rafters so they'd all fit. After cutting the wood and using the sander to get the correct angle on them, I used the jig to put all of my rafters together. And then once I was done with the rafters I let them dry. 
and I moved on to a little bit of the trim that supported the roof. I only had to cut some pieces and glue them together, but then I had also had some laser cut trim pieces that went underneath them, and they matched the original structure perfectly. Now once the rafters were all dry, I used my sander to get all of the ends exactly matched up. Then I painted the ends as they would be exposed underneath the roofing. Then I made the ceiling for my building and drew where all the rafters were going to go. And I spaced them out as I was gluing them in place. And then used the siding that I had cut to go on the two gable ends. And I then cut my two roof panels. But I wanted to get back to a little detail work. So I made a few items that were going to go inside. This was a clipboard that had a form on it. And I added a couple of calendars inside and another clipboard that would be hanging on the wall, plus a scale house form. Then getting back to the roof, I painted them the correct base shade and drew my seams on them. And then I glued them onto my roof assembly, first on one side and then on the other, weighing them as they dried. Then I test fit the roof onto the structure to see how it would look. I then added a ridge cap to the roof and started to work on the trim that went on the gable ends. Again, I had to make these up from two pieces of wood and get the angles sanded correctly. Then I was able to add them onto the gable ends of the roof. And the roof was going to be removable so you can get inside if you need to. Now the trim underneath the roof had a number of profiles on the original building, but I was able to match them pretty well. Then I came along and painted the tar on the seams for the metal roof. I'd found some 3D printed doorknobs and decided to use them. I tried a couple of different colors to see which I liked best on them. And I had picked a brass color that once it was weathered pretty well matched the photos. Then I applied one of them to the inside and the matching one to the outside of the door. Now it was time to start weathering the building. I started with the roof and did my first round of weathering using artist pigments on that. Then I started weathering the building again using artist pigments. And during the era of my friend's layout, there was a lot of coal being weighed and a lot of steam and the building would have gotten covered in soot and coal dust. So at this point, most of my construction was done. I had added a pair of steps leading up to the door and I checked that all the lighting worked correctly. And the next thing that I needed to add to it was a stove pipe on top of the roof that would match up with the stove on the inside. I had found a cast metal one that had a perfect peak to it, but I needed to cut the base at the correct angle to match the roof. Once I found the angle of the roof, I transferred that and then used my sander to get it to match perfectly. Now I was going to mount this by drilling a hole in the bottom and sticking a styrene rod into it. This would make for a strong mounting on the roof. Now I glued the cap onto the top of it. And then after putting flashing on the roof, I drilled a hole through that and glued the smokestack onto the roof. I then did a little rusting around the stovepipe and the flashing, and then did more weathering on the roof, blending in the stovepipe with the roof, and adding a little more streaking to the roof. Now the last thing to make was a coal box. While the photo showed an oil tank, this would have been before that, and they were using coal for heating. And the scale house was now finished and it came out matching the photos and the drawings pretty well. And my friend was happy with it and it's now sitting prominently on his layout. 
These are a couple of pictures of it on his layout with the lights fully lit. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.